Welcome back. Welcome to section 5.3 on elementary matrices. Let's read the goal of the section together. To learn about elementary matrices in order to develop a method to determine whether an n by n matrix A is invertible and to find its inverse. So you recall in the previous section we learned how to find the inverse of a 2 by 2. We have a formula and now we want to develop a method for 3 by 3s, 4 by 4s and larger. And so the first step in that is to define uh, elementary matrices and to give some examples. So let's read the definition together. Definition 5.3.1. An n by n matrix E is called an elementary matrix if it can be obtained from the identity matrix by applying one single elementary row operation. So what does that mean? Well, let's see a couple of examples of that right away. So example 5.3.1. So all three matrices that are written here, E, F, and G, are examples of elementary matrices. Why is that? Well, let's take a look right away. Uh, so if you look at the first matrix, E, at point 1 here, you notice that if I want to go from I to E, all I need to do is minus 3, row 1. That becomes my new row 1. And so with this single elementary row operation, I was able to turn I into E. And that makes E an elementary matrix. Notice that we can do the same thing in the second example. Uh, but this time, the operation, I think it's not that hard to see that it'll simply be to swap row 2 and row 3. So that single elementary row operation turns I into F. And finally, for the third matrix, uh, this one's a little trickier, but not that much. Right? We can see that if we take row 3 plus 3 times row 2, make that our new row 3, that single elementary row operation will turn I into G. And that makes E, F, and G, all three of those matrices, elementary matrices. Okay, so now that we understand the definition of an elementary matrix, uh, just a couple of things that we can notice. And the first one is that for every elementary matrix, you can find the inverse elementary row operation. So the inverse elementary row operation is simply going to be the operation that converts the matrix back to I. So if you look at the first one, right, first matrix E, which is an elementary row operation uh, matrix, uh, what do we have to do to convert it back to I? Well, you notice that if I take minus one third row one and make that my new row one, well, that's going to turn it back into I, right? Which means that minus one third row one is the inverse, I'll write it like this, is the inverse ERO, elementary row operation, uh, of, well, the original one, which was minus three row one becomes row one. So you notice the inverse operation is basically just taking the reciprocal, right? Um, we can do the same thing for the other two matrices. In number two, it's easy to see that if I want to convert F back to I, I can do row two interchange with row three which you notice is the same operation that we did to begin with. Okay, so this time, row 2 interchange with row 3 is the inverse. Here, I'll make this quicker by just doing this. It's the inverse ERO of, well, the same one, right? The same operation, row 2 interchange with row 3. And so that operation is its own elementary, its own inverse, rather. And finally, the last one, notice that if we want to go from G back to I, then we should do row 3 uh, minus three times row two, and that becomes our new row three, right? So again, this operation, row three minus three times row two, that operation is the inverse ERO of the one where we did row three plus three times row two, right? So this is just to understand how do we get the inverse operations. Does that make sense? So these three are the inverse elementary row operations uh, compared to the original three. And so we sum that up here in this little takeaway table. We scroll down to the next page. And so we're just summing up the, this table just sums up what we just noticed, which is that if we have the elementary row operation k row i, well, all we have to do is take 1 over k row i, and that's going to give us the inverse elementary row operation. And whereas for row i swapped with row j, that's its own inverse, right? So that's going to be row i swapped with row j. And finally, for the last one, we notice that if it's ri plus k row j, then it's going to be row i minus k row j becomes a new row i. Okay, so each one of those um, of those uh, elementary row operations has an inverse operation. Okay, and that brings us to what we were interested in elementary matrices to begin with, which is this statement. So proposition five point three point one which says that elementary matrix allows us to convert an elementary row operation into a matrix multiplication, right? So what does that mean? Well, let's take it step by step. Well, the first step is 
in this example, consider two matrices, A and B. You notice that if you take a look at B, you notice that you can obtain B from A with one operation, right? Can you see what that is? So we can verify that B can be obtained by applying the elementary row operation. And if you take a look at it, it's not hard to see that that operation is going to be row 2 minus 2 times row 1, right? That becomes our new row 2. And so that elementary row operation turns A into B, right? So to the question, how do we go from A to B? Well, it's by applying that elementary row operation. But an elementary row operation is also what allows us to create an elementary matrix, right? So let's do that. So it says here, now consider the elementary matrix obtained by applying that same ERO to I. So I'll do it down here. If I take I, 1, 0, 0, 1, we'll see in a second why I chose the 2 by 2 uh, identity matrix. So if I apply the same ERO, so row 2 minus 2, row 1, which becomes our new row 2, well, I obtain a matrix 1, 0, minus 2, 1, and that is an elementary matrix, right? Because it's obtained from I with one step, and so that's what I'm going to put here. E is the matrix 1, 0, minus 2, 1. So that's the elementary matrix that corresponds to that elementary operation. This elementary matrix was obtained by using this elementary operation and applying it directly to I, okay? But it's also the operation that turns A into B. Now, what's interesting about this, and I'm going to write it down, I'll, I'll say observe, observe what happens, what happens when uh, we left multiply, so I'm going to say left multiply. So remember, mu matrix multiplication, whether you multiply on one side or the other, is different, right? So left multiply uh, the matrix A, matrix A by E. So what does that mean? Well, if I take the matrix A, which is the matrix 2, 3, 0, 5, 1, 2, that's the matrix A, and I multiply on the left-hand side, I'm going to put the matrix E. So that's what we mean by left multiplying, meaning multiplying on the left, minus 2, 1. Let's carry out that multiplication. By now, we're pretty good at these, I think. So row 1, column 1. Uh, first of all, what's the size going to be? Well, this is a 2 by 2, this is a 2 by 3, and so the result will also be a 2 by 3. Row 1, column 1, so 1 times 2, 0 times 5 is 2. Then row 1, column 2, 3 plus 0, 3, and 0. So you see that the first row just recopies the first row of matrix A. Let's do the same thing with the second row. So minus 4 plus 5, 1. Minus 6 plus 1, minus 5. And 0 plus 2 is 2. And if you check a little further up, you can see that this is none other than matrix B. So what, what just happened here? Well, what we did is we took E times A, matrix E, the elementary matrix that we created from that elementary row operation, multiplied by A gives us B. Well, that's the same as if we had applied this elementary row operation directly to the matrix A to obtain B. In other words, here, let's sum it up down here. So I'll say IE. If I start with matrix A and I apply the operation row 2 minus 2 row 1 to replace row 2 and obtain B, well, I get the same result if I left multiply A, I also obtain B. Okay, so that's what we're noticing is that applying an elementary row operation directly to a matrix yields the same result as left multiplying matrix A by the elementary matrix corresponding to that elementary row operation. And that's the result that we wanted to obtain in this section. And that's the end of this video.